Yep. All right. In Second Corinthians five eight, we see once again where Paul said that for him to be absent from his body means that he will be present before the Lord. Thus, if his soul departs his body, it does not go into a state of sleep after his death. But instead, Paul said that he would be in the presence of the Lord. This contradicts the false teaching of soul sleep. Reason sounds like a right. <laughs> yeah, and also sounds like a misreading of, of the word of the verse. You know, Second Corinthians chapter five verse eight is a verse that I hear at many funerals, and they say, "Oh, and to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord." And you know, so this person is with the Lord now. He they're absent from this body, but present with the Lord, because to be oh. absent from the body is oh. to be present with the Lord. And he didn't even say that. He says, um. You know, his words were, it says, for him to be absent from his body means that he will be present before the Lord. Thus, if his soul departs his body, it does not go into his, uh, the sleep after his death. But instead, Paul said that he would be in the presence of the Lord. This contradicts himself. And he was saying that uh, to be absent from the body means to be present with the Lord, right? But if, if we look at the verse, it doesn't even say that. It says, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body. And to yep. be present with the Lord. So the verse is saying we're willing rather. Like we would rather be absent from this body and present with the Lord. It doesn't say to be absent from our body is to be present with the Lord. Let's just talk real quick about the context, right? So the context of this chapter starts actually starts from chapter four. Um, I believe from verse 16. It says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish. Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. So he's saying, like, look, our current body, it perishes, but we're renewed day by day. For our light affliction, that's pain that our body suffers. My knee hurts from a long time ago, actually. But anyway, our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding internal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Continuing on, to the Richard, next chapter, he says this, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, and house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. So he's basically saying, look, if this house, our bodies, if our bodies are destroyed, we're, we have one that God is going to give us. He goes on, he says, For in this, in this body, right, we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. We earnestly desire to be clothed with our house from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened. Not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon. And here's the key. That mortality might be swallowed up of life. So he's talking about when we are no longer mortal, but when we are changed from immort from mortality to immortality. And let's also keep in mind that when he says this, he's speaking to Corinthians, which he already spoke to the Corinthians in First Corinthians, right? In First Corinthians chapter 15, he talked very extensively about when this happens, when mortality is swallowed up of life. So I'm just gonna finish this chapter, but then I'm gonna go right back to it. So it says now he that have wrought us for this selfsame thing is God, who also have given unto us the earnest of, it, of the spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we're at home in the body, like while we're here in our bodies, right, currently, we are absent from the Lord. How does that make sense? Well, we're not physically with God right now. The Lord is in heaven. But we, yeah, but he put this in parentheses, for we walk by faith, not by sight. So yeah, we understand we're in the presence of God, but physically we're not in heaven right now. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. What the verse is basically saying is, I would rather not be in this body. I would rather have my new body and be present with God. Yep. Let's go and yeah, Robert Ray, you're you're on it, man. Like, look, this is that's that's my guy. So let's go to First Corinthians chapter 15 and see. Because remember, this is the second letter to Corinthians. So he spoke about this. Let's look at some of those key verses that he talked about. Verse 35, it talks about the resurrection body. It says, But some men will say, How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? 
right? And he's basically telling us that we're all going to get a new type of body. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. That is our current body, but it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. That's our current position. It is raised a spiritual body. This is the house that we really want. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. And those words was made with supplied words. But the last Adam we know will be having that new body. How be it? That was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is of the Lord from heaven. Uh, I'll fast forward. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. When? At the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. You can read First uh, Thessalonians chapter 4. It says the Lord shall come down from heaven with a shout, with the trump of God, with the voice of the Mark, Michael, the archangel. Sorry, it doesn't say Michael. With the voice of the archangel and the dead of Christ shall rise. So this is all happening at that trump. We're all going to be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality there's another verse in philippians uh chapter three that talks about this same thing it says in verse 20 for our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the savior the lord jesus christ who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things so yeah the verse is basically saying that we would rather have that kind of body. So we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from this body and present with the Lord. It's not saying what everybody says at funerals all the time. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. It's not saying that. He's just saying, I would rather be absent from this body and present with the Lord. Because in context, he knows God has a new body for him. Yeah. I just want to add a verse to that. Um, we spoke about this verse earlier. Uh, Job chapter 19, verse 25. So it says, For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and he shall stand on the and he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh I shall see God. So is it true that when you're absent from the body, you'll be present with the Lord? That your spirit sees God? No. The Bible says that Job says that he will see God in his body. He's going to see God in his flesh, right? But it's going to be a new body, a resurrected body, a glorified body. Amen. Amen. All right. So moving on.